12 News Eye on Agriculture with Britton Rucker. Coming up, John Deere is facing some rough terrain. The agricultural giant has just slashed its profit forecast for the year. Find out what's behind the dip and how it's affecting farmers. As the heat returns to Kansas, so does the risk of heat-related illnesses to our livestock herds. We'll talk with Jess the vet about what you can do now to help limit your risk later on. Good evening and welcome into Ion Agriculture. I'm Britton Rucker. Severe storms last week brought some much needed moisture to farmers and ranchers. Let's get over to meteorologist Adrian Campa for a look at the latest on rainfall totals and a look at your drought map. That's right, Britton. So thankfully, those rain and thunderstorms really did help out. So we've seen some improvements around the state, down to 67% of Kansas in drought and 27% still in severe. Still a long ways to go for southwest into central Kansas. But looking ahead at the next couple of weeks, I do think we'll start to keep an active weather pattern around the area with above average chances of precipitation, especially out in southwestern Kansas for areas that really need it. So signs are looking good for more beneficial moisture around the Sunflower State. Thank you, Adrian. And last week's thunderstorms also brought damage. Check out these pictures from Rush County. Severe weather left behind damage at a farm near Rush Center. Candy sent us these images saying that this is her mother's farm. Exciting news from Kansas State University. Last week, at Kansas State celebrated the groundbreaking of the Global Center for Grain and Food Initiative in Manhattan. The state-of-the-art facility will house the College of Agriculture's Department of Grain, Science, and Industry. A comprehensive plan involving over $200 million in new construction and renovations. This initiative aims to position Kansas State as a leading next-generation land-grant university. Ernie Mitten, Dean of the College of agriculture express the positive impact this center will have on future students, faculty, and stakeholders. This really represents the, the teaching and research and innovation that occurs on the value-added side of both the grain and, and livestock uh, food products. Uh, very, very important to the economy of the state of Kansas and, and obviously very important for our students as well. We want to be ahead of the curve. We want to be where the world is coming to learn about agriculture rather than being reactive to what's happening around the country and happening around the world. Buildings are a start to be able to get there. The next piece is supporting programs, technologies, and ultimately people and leaders that will drive us forward. This is set to be completed in the summer of 2026. The center will feature labs, industry partner spaces, and modern research and teaching facilities. It will also foster collaboration between public and private sectors, dedicating 30% of its space for joint efforts in tackling complex agricultural challenges. Governor Laura Kelly announces $6.65 million for rural road safety improvements in 10 counties. That money, which comes from federal funding, will go towards 10 projects aimed at increasing safety and efficiency of local roadways. A project here in Sedgwick County receiving the most of federal funding at $1.6 million. It's for the road many have complained about the conditions of. West MacArthur from 215 to K42 just south of Goddard. Sedgwick County will add to the funding with over $1.1 million. A case of bird flu has been reported in a farm worker in Michigan. State and federal health officials say that the worker had regular exposure to infected livestock and is being monitored due to that exposure. The person reported only eye symptoms and has since recovered. This is now the second human case reported as part of the ongoing U.S. virus outbreak. A case in Texas was reported back in March, and that patient also recovered with no lasting problems. Health officials say the risk to the general public remains low. Well-known ag equipment maker John Deere once again lowering its profit forecast for this year. It's now forecasting $7 billion in income as opposed to the previous estimate of $7.5 billion. It says the cut is due to declining sales of tractors and combines, which is driven by lower commodity prices, which of course is impacting farm incomes. It is now predicting a 20 to 25 percent drop in large ag equipment sales. It did, however, report second quarter results this week that beat Wall Street's expectations. 
The Biden administration plans to release a million barrels of gasoline in the coming weeks. The 42 million gallons of gasoline will come from strategic reserves that are located in Maine and New Jersey. The sale isn't expected to have a significant income impact at prices at the pump. Last year, the U.S. consumed an average of around 9 million barrels of gasoline a day. So the 1 million barrels set to be released only makes up a portion of the national daily use. Still to come, there's a new push in Washington to get more young people into agricultural careers. How one sector hopes to keep them from drowning in debt. Kaufman C. 